Today is an exciting day because today's the day that I bring home one of my boyhood dreams. This is an APC 90s era Smart UPS 3000 VA 2.2 kilowatt output 48 volt tower UPS and the reason I longed for one of these is that when I was in school, the, in the IT class thingy, we had one of these. And it was awesome. It was the device which triggered my UPS nerdiness back in like 2008 or so. And I never thought I'd get my hands on one. Well, well I did realize I would get one out of the trash eventually. And 10 years later, I have. And what a day it is. So, the 3000 VA of these white ones uh, is a bit beefier than the rest. Uh, for instance, the two, all the smaller models are uh, narrower. The two top models, I believe the uh, 2200V and the 3000 and share the chassis, which is uh, about uh, two centimeters wider than the normal smaller APC smart UPS chassis you're used to seeing. So this really is a behemoth. And the 3000 VA unit in particular has an impressive looking as to it because it has a 120 millimeter fan which is quite unusual for a 90s unit uh, indeed the 2200 VA one I got fell in love with back in the day actually had 92 mil uh, that's the 120 mil is specific for the high-end model something which is also specific for the high-end model is that they've done away with a separate X extended runtime and uh, normal models. This is not advertised as an extended runtime model, yet you can hook up your external battery pack right from the factory. Exciting times. To make things even better, this particular one supposedly also comes with a reasonably fl fresh couple of batteries. Uh, the guy gave it to me said they're uh, probably two years old or so. Uh, well, I'm going to have to put them on the test to see if they're any good. Uh, hopefully they are, because I don't quite fancy hacking this thing too much. I just want to restore it to its former glory, because this is just the pinnacle of 90s office server technology. This thing would be powering all kinds of Pentium Pro based awful old SESI based <laughs> storage system and ah, oh, it's just so 90s and I love it. So let's just get this thing apart and have a look inside. Supposedly this thing has been in use ever since it was new till today. So it's probably got to, oh, let's see what was this made. Oh, this is a modern one. It's made in 2003, I believe, week 36. General the APC numbers are uh, 03 is the year and 36 is the week there. Huh. So this is a really late production run of these. Because like one year later or so, we got the black ones. All right. And apart she comes. On my screw. We pry the faceplate off. Being careful not to break the very brittle plastic on there. And this should just lift off. And we're inside. What do we have? Big transformers, big capacitors, air guides, all the things we want. Uh, this is a neat layout compared to how they usually come. I do like the air guide there. And I do like that they have chosen to populate 
every single device on these big heatings making for very low resistance connections very efficient switching ah oh, just look at those rows in there beautiful so much decoupling so many transistors oh what a beast uh, of course it is going to suffer from the normal apc issue a failed 22 microfarad caps i bet that's a 22 right there which is going to have to be replaced before this thing sees any proper use and what else we have ah the traditional giant apc processor is that not a thing of beauty uh, I have a nostalgia. And I've actually got to look inside of the one in school. I was so disappointed. It's so long overdue for me to get to actually have a look inside of this. Oh, it brings a tear to my eye. And this, this is one badass Anderson connector. What's that? 6AWG. American wide gauge focus wire, I know, eight. Fair enough. Still beefy, beefy, beefy going to the external battery connector. This thing can handle some grunt. Now that is a 24 volts, 300 milliamp, 120 mil fan, 38 millimeters thickness can assuredly handle quite a bit of blowing. Now something which is a bit of an issue with the white smart UPSs, at least the smaller ones, is that uh, they do not have any kind of software control over the charging voltage and APC have always been notorious for their charging voltages being set closer to uh, 14 volts per pack than the recommended 13.5 or so. So you do need to usually make uh, hardware modifications to these in order to make them not uh, grenade your batteries in three years time. And I bet that these guys, even if they are just a couple of years old, are going to be suffering some issues already. They're not going to be anywhere near their rated capacity due to the high charge voltage. Because I bet this thing charges at, uh, uh, I'm going to say, 13.85 per battery. Mark my words. But uh, let's waste no more time. Let's power this thing up and see what it does. All right. And in there you go. Yucky original APC batteries. Not usually a pinnacle of quality. Uh, they probably last the three years of a guarantee. <laughs> three years is alive. It's alive. Four bars battery. An incredibly loud fan. We're going to need some mains power for this. And since it's 3000 VA, needs the fat I see. <laughs> In you go. Bonk. And it's drawing 200 watts. <laughs> But well, that's going to be charging the batteries at some rate. And rolling the fan. And I just run up to fetch the clamp meter as the power consumption has dropped to about 90 watts. So we can see uh, just how much current this is actually charging the batteries with. So right now it's sitting at uh, 460, 450 milliamps and dropping. It's definitely not maxing out for charges. So let's just see. Uh, what our current charge voltage is. Now keep in mind this is going to be under load so it's not going to be uh, the final charge voltage but 
it could give us a bit of an idea as to what we're dealing with. Again, I'm, I'm going to bet it's going to be way too high, but let's see. And we're measuring currently 54.57 volts, which is surprisingly good. Uh, that comes down to, what well, this is about 13.7 uh, or so per battery, which is very good. But we're going to have to see what that turns into once it's done charging, because I do think, well, in fact, we can just check it very easily, but disconnecting a battery, that's going to put the charger completely at idle. And that leaves us with 54.57 volts. Okay. I will have to eat my hat. This thing has a decently performing charger. 54.57 is A-OK, -okay. that's fine. That's what I did just this to. Beautiful. This is probably the first ABC I ever saw with a decent battery charge voltage. Go figure, and has to be my favorite of them all. And here's a reminder to keep your battery leads in check, lest you desire for chunks to go missing. And there we have the download configured and all the batteries hooked up and a most impressive red and black mess. This is uh, rather finicky, not really the safest way to go about things, but uh, we do seem to have everything uh, wired up correctly. I've removed the battery fuses to make these all act as individual 12 volt blocks, and uh, I'm currently charging them with a lead power supply there at 3 amps in total. So the lead power supply is feeding into this uh, giant block of banana plugs there which in turn is feeding to the charger inputs on the dumbbell load and the dumbbell load has the batteries connected to it as well as the uh, voltage monitoring terminal so uh, I'm going to let these charge for a little while and uh, then I'm just going to flick the big red switches and uh, this is going to get to a run at a 10 amp discharge overnight and we'll see just in how good a shape these batteries really are hopefully they're decent and they can serve as UVS for quite a while. All right, I left the batteries on a equalization charge for about an hour or so at almost 15 volts, and the result is they started to firmly run away, and they were drawing more and more current and just come back down and they're all warm and horrible. That should never happen, so I don't think these guys are going to be in particularly great shape. You can still see the current kind of slowly rising, even though they turn the voltage in, but let's just Start the test and uh, let these guys drain until they're done. I'm going to bet uh, at uh, about 40% of their uh, specified capacity, like uh, 6 amp hours or so. And if we look at the actual data, I don't think they're even going to be doing that because they're sitting at like 12 volts under a 10 amp load and one already turned off. So yeah, these guys, I think I'm gonna redo the test at a lower current. And the testing's done and I don't wanna say I told you so, but come on, six amp hours. Just as predicted is saved for the first battery, which is at one amp hour. It's an outlier, it's terrible and that thing's been the thing that's been wrecking this UPS's utility because a one amp hour battery is not going to provide very well when you're dealing with a 3000 watt unit. So these batteries are garbage. I'm going to let them charge them and uh, put them aside. And uh, now we're just going to move on to actually playing around with the UPS itself because we do, as is tradition with APC, have a shit ton of out of focus shit brand 22 microfarad caps and I guarantee you that these guys are going to be out of spec and pretty much done for and in need of replacement. 
The big caps never usually go bad, so I'm not too fussed about those, but the 22 microfarad ones are gonna have to go. So let's use our vintage PC to probe around our vintage UPS and see just how bad these caps are. So there's gonna be a 33 mic one. Now that's, oh that's actually decent. But the 22s have the ones which always go. So let's give one of those a stab. That's a 22. And it's destroyed. So yeah, we're gonna have to do all the 22s as you always need to in an APC UPS let's do another one just for just for fun of seeing how bad they are yeah 10 microfarad 5 ohms I don't get hate always for 22s all the other cups tend to be just decent enough and of course can replace all the tiny cups just for the sake of it uh, but yeah 22s and, and at APC UPSs they always go uh, just for just for kick selects it also pro the big giant caps see and see how good they are they tend to be usually in very very good shape uh, 20 milli ohms 4600 microfarads i actually have no idea what they're rated for but uh, they're gonna be in good shape because they always are jeez it's almost as if i knew this was gonna happen ah and there we go New caps all around. This unit is lovely to service since you don't even need to take the main board out in order to replace all the small caps. So I've shoved some Nichikan PWs in there for the most part. And I was lacking a couple of values, so a few of the caps turned out rather ridiculous. Uh, for instance, uh, let's see, where are you? That guy in there. Uh, that was a 100 microfarad. Uh, 6.3 volt which turned into a 35 volt one, but eh, it's not going to do anything bad It's just going to turn the unit into an even more reliable beast So I have shoved some dodgy but probably worthwhile batteries in there, so let's see what she sounds like All right, MPD UPS2. Let's see what you've got. That was a beautiful turn on. Oh, well, same for that horrible light fan. Should replace that. But beyond that, the transformers are running beautifully quietly. The turn on was perfect, as it always is when you replace the caps in these. So this old girl is ready to live. another many years once I get the fan replaced. Jeez, what monster. So since this is a 24 volt a ball bearing fan of quite some power, uh, I figured uh, perhaps we'd try and uh, give this a look through the uh, lube bearings up and see if perhaps we can kind of fix this for the time being. Because uh, decent 24 volt fans are very expensive and they it don't come in the quiet flavors usually. So replacing this with a normal PC fan would perhaps not be the easiest thing in the world. And oh dear, if I rub that bearing, I can feel it is so grimy. Yeah, for the time being, I'm just gonna fill it up with my magical proprietary oil blend, which is mostly just uh, Rather viscous gearbox oil usually works pretty well. There we go. Nice drenched bearings on that. Click. I think that's on. It's on there. Excellent. That's a refurbished fan. And we'll close that off with a bit of aluminium tape. Because I do not trust the adhesive on the original label to work anymore that goes back on there yeah, good enough ah there we go a rather fresh looking fan unit i do like the fact that you can just take the entire back thing 
uh, of the UPS with almost no effort. It's literally a four screws and the cable for the smart, smart slot. So, uh, to kind of uh, mitigate the noise issues, I've mounted the fan on uh, rubber grommets. Uh, I'm hoping it's going to fit inside. It could be a bit tight since there are some components kind of hitting this corner of the fan, but I think it might work. So, fingers crossed. I think we're going to have a decent noise upgrade. All right, everything's back in place. Uh, the fan is ever so slightly touching the capacitor in there, which is gonna make a noise couple into the PCB, but uh, it still remains rather flexible and decoupled from the metal case. So, here's to hoping, cotton the power, let's see how it sounds. And uh, while well, it certainly isn't quiet, uh, it's no longer squealing like a raped cat. Ah, uh, would you look at that? Just a slight touch with a soldering iron, and uh, we've actually managed to get an ever so slight gap between the fan and that dodgy cap, so the fan can now move around quite freely without transmitting vibrations anywhere. Excellent. And boy does this fan benefit from these rubber mains because just look at how much it moves around when we actually start a cell test. That is not a low vibration fan. Alright, and for the final trick of the day, we have some big honking batteries and a big honking load, so let's start the show. We have no fuse, by the way. If this goes boom, it really goes boom. Let's just get the clamp meter on there. 1.7 amps idle. Two amps, sixteen amps, thirty two amps, and it's shouting at me because it thinks it's out of battery. For a final show, forty seven amps, two thousand watts. And not even breaking a sweat, not even maxing out the load meter. Excellent. I'm going to be happy with that. Thank you for watching. Cheerio.